Welcome, in this video we are going to deploy a Django Wagtail site to the internet using GUnicorn, Nginx and Supervisor. <coughs> Previously we have cloned and installed our project on a server already, so let's have a look at the server. The user is user pet, and this is the IP address of our server. There we have our project. Let's go into the virtual environment and into our project. And now we can start the run server to see how our project is looking like with the generic IP address 000 and then port 8000. No, 8000, that was wrong. And then go to our site and type in the IP address with this port and see if we can reach our site. Yes, everything is working okay, so that we know the site is okay. So now, now let's continue with installing GUnicorn. And that is as simple as install GUnicorn with pip. Now it's already installed. You can see, uh, I'll go to the GUnicorn site. Let's have a look here. Uh, this is GUnicorn, and if you go to deploying, then you can see you can install it in the virtual environment. And since we are using GUnicorn to manage our Django application, we did right. We did exactly that. Now to test that GUnicorn is actually serving our site, we can execute GUnicorn and use the WSGI file within our project and bind gunicorn to this IP address that we just used on port 8000. Now it should be running. Let's have a look here. Let's reload this. As you can see, it has finished reloading and um, our site is available. We can go to articles and we can go back to the home page. Everything seems to be working. So gunicorn is um, installed. Um, obviously we don't want to run GUnicorn in our terminal, so let's quit this and let's create a configuration file for GUnicorn that we can use when we run GUnicorn in the background. Um, we will create this, we can put it anywhere, but we will put it uh, in a directory, etc. within our virtual environment. So etc and then a direct subdirectory gunicorn so let's make that let's go into that and let's create a file conf.py to put all our parameters in if we look at the gunicorn documentation and then go to configuration and then it says you can do this in a number of ways you can actually write a script to provide all the arguments of gunicorn to the command line uh, but we will use a configuration file which is a valid python source file uh, with a python extension where we can put all the parameters that we need and the parameters are specified here in settings all of them are right here actually there is an example file an example setting file here on the gunicorn repository and you can see that a number of the parameters are already specified here. Um, so we won't actually put all of them in, but uh, just the ones that uh, are interesting. Let's start with a simple one, the number of workers. Um, we will put that at three, which means more or less that there are three parallel processes that we can use. Next one is keep alive, which is five seconds here, while the default is, I believe, at two. Uh, yeah, here it is, two seconds. So we'll reserve ourselves a little bit more time. And then the number of users, uh, our username is user pet, uh, and the process name that we're going to use is pet. Then with respect to logging, we have log level error. We can also set other log levels like warning, for example, but we will use log level error with two log files, an error log file, which will be located at our virtual environment, and then a subdirectory var log, and then unicorn error dot log. And in the same way, we will also specify an access log, which will be at the same location in this directory log. 
Now an important parameter is the bind parameter. Let's go over there. Here, server socket and then bind here. Um, we saw already that we use the bind parameter to bind to an IP address, which uh, GUnicorn used. But now we are going to bind it to a file, a Unix file with uh, this syntax, Unix colon path. And this will be a socket file that we will use to communicate between Nginx and GUnicorn. So let's create this parameter. Um, Unix colon and then a path to a file within our virtual environment in a subdirectory run and then gunicorn.soc is the name of the file. We will use exactly the same file when we configure Nginx later. Then we also need to tell gunicorn that we want to use the production settings instead of the development settings. So let's have a look at the Django uh, where we have this parameter Django settings module which allows us to do that. Uh, if we set this parameter to the production settings, then we can uh, tell GUnicorn to use them. Now, going back to the GUnicorn site, um, this should be in here. And then we have a parameter environment. Uh, if you use it in a configuration file, you have to say, you have to use a raw environment. And with this, you can specify uh, a number of parameters. Let's have a look at GitHub, how they do that. And here is an example. It's just a list of a number of parameters which you set to a certain value. So for us, it's going to be this Django settings module, and we want to set it to our production settings. And this is done in this way. Here is the list. It contains only one element, and that is that the Django settings module is set to pet.settings.production, which is our production settings. And finally, we set the Python path, Python path here. Um, that we need to do that because we want GUnicorn to find the WSGI file um, that it wants to execute upon. Here it is, and it's just a path to our project. Now with this, we can save the configuration file, and we still have to create these two directories, so let's do that. Environment, etc. No. Environment var slash log and make directory environment run. Those are the two that we needed. That's all for GUnicorn. Now let's go back to our home directory and exit the virtual environment because we are going to install Nginx and we're going to do that on the server level, so not within the virtual environment. And that's because Nginx is able to run multiple uh, instances of GUnicorn and Django project at the same time, so we need to install it at the server level. And we can do that with the command apt-get. Uh, let's first update the listing so that we make sure that we have all the recent versions of all the software. And that's done, so now we can install apt-get install nginx. Yes, we want to continue. That's done. Now let's look at the configuration. And the configuration is on the root level in the file, etc. And then a subdirectory sub Nginx. Let's have a look. And here are all the parameters, the configuration files for Nginx. You see that there is a configuration file with the main configuration here. There is another file proxy parameters that we're going to use as well. And then there are two subdirectories that are important for us if sites available and sites enabled. Now, the way this will work is that we will create our configuration file in sites available and then copy it to sites enabled, enabled to make sure that Nginx picks it up from there. Let's have a look at this Nginx configuration file here to see how that works. Now, if you look at it, then you can see that I think it is here. Yes, here it is. It includes the sites enabled files that are in there, uh, and it includes them in the configuration. So let's go to sites available. And create a directory to create a file there. Now we have to use sudo because otherwise the file would not be created. 
to see how such a configuration file actually is constructed, there is an example on the Nginx side here. Uh, the links are in the written tutorial as usual. Uh, but there's also a very good tutorial on DigitalOcean. And here it is, and it's called uh, How to set up Django with Postgres, Nginx, and GUnicorn. And here is an example of how to set that up. So what I'll do is just paste the content in and show you what all the different entries mean. Um, here it is. It sets up a server block with a server name with the domain names Python eats tail in it, and then two log files, access log, error log, which will be at the same location at, as the unicorn logs that we defined just a minute ago. Um, they will be called nginx access and nginx error.log. Then a location entry, which in this case tells that if uh, nginx would miss the favicon.ico file, then it should not log that because it's not a very, very serious thing to do. And it happens very often that if the favicon.icon is not there, then uh, there will be an error generated and this is not really necessary. Then there are two entries, static and media, which tells Nginx where to pick up the static files and the media files, and it can pick them up, obviously, within our project because this is the path to our project. And that's actually a um, large a big function of the web server to pick up static files uh, without going to the project itself. Then all the other requests should go to GUnicorn. So we pass the request to the GUnicorn socket that we just created here. And this is exactly the same file path as we used in our configuration of GUnicorn. And then we include the proxy parameters, a couple of settings that Nginx needs in order to work properly. So that's all that needs to be in there. We can save the file. And now we create the link to the site's enable directory, sudo ln s etc. nginx sites available. You need to use the whole path because otherwise it will not work. That should be okay. Let's check. And there is our configuration file. Now to test whether Nginx is working properly, we can use the slash t command, and that tells us that the syntax is okay in a configuration file as well. Let's go back to our home directory, enter the virtual environment again. Well, go into our project, and now we are going to start up GUnicorn here and see if the communication between GUnicorn and Nginx is functioning proper, properly. Now, if we go to our site now, let's try that. HTTP www python it's still.com. Then we see that we are arriving at Nginx, but obviously GUnicorn is not started yet. So uh, this is as far as we can get. Now let's start GUnicorn here. With a configuration of the file that we defined. Now it should be running, and let's see if we if we refresh the page, what will happen? Well, basically nothing is happening, so maybe we have to restart Nginx. Let's do that, and we can do that by using the system control command. And let's try to run GUnicorn again. And then we are a step further, but we get a bad request. Now, I'll be honest with you, I did this on purpose to show you what happens uh, because we forgot something, and that is the parameter allowed hosts. Let me explain that to you. If we go to Django's documentation, then it tells us that with the parameter allowed host, um, where are we? Uh, 
here it is this is the parameter allowed host and if it is not set then uh, it will be an empty list and then it will raise a suspicious operation exception so let's have a look at that and then we can see that if this happens then it will lead to a http response response bad request and this is exactly what is happening and so the problem is that we didn't set our allowed hosts uh, parameter which needs to be set in a production environment when dbig is false let's have a look at our development environment here and go to our settings here are the settings now if you look at development then you can see that allowed hosts is with a wildcard uh, set to basically any host which is allowed and we don't want to do that in production but in production we didn't set this parameter so we need to include it there so let's do that in our development environment by putting allowed hosts to our domain and saving this let's go out let's open a second terminal new window let's make that a bit, bit a little bit more larger let's go to our directory and add this to our repository git commit added allowed hosts uh, one file changed so it push that seemed to work so let's here stop the unicorn for a second and we are here in the virtual in the project environment so we should have access to our repository so let's do git pull and we see that there's one file changed now we can check whether the change was actually made by showing the file production.py and there we see we have our load hosts so that should bring us back to this and then execute the unicorn again there we are now it should be running and let's try this again now we can see that we have our site so putting this parameter allowed hosts uh, is actually solving the problem but still we don't want to run geonicon in the foreground so let's kill this and go out of our virtual environment again go to our home directory and install supervisor which is the tool that is going to manage both geonicon and nginx apt get install supervisor what you do it Simple of work. Let's look at the configuration of supervisor. It should be a, a subdirectory of the etc. directory again. So here we are, and there we have the configuration of supervisor. And let's have a look at that. And we can see here at the end there is an include statement as well. Um, the files that will be in the subdirectory conf dot d and and in um, conf uh, they are will be included in this uh, configuration file so what we have to do is to go into that directory conf.d and create our configurations file files for gunicorn and nginx here first one will be gunicorn So let's have a look how such a configuration file should actually be constructed. Uh, here we are at supervisor and um, let's have a look at this is running it now configuration file and there is a number of settings here that you can use. Uh, actually there is an example on a digital in a digital ocean tutorial here um, which is called uh, how to install and manage supervisor. Um, the link is again in the written tutorial and there you can see that 
The way to do that is to have here a program colon and then the name of the program, a command, and a number of other parameters that you can put here. So I'll just paste it in and show you what the parameters are. Here it is. The program is going to be called gunipet. The command is exactly the command that we used before to start gunicorn here uh, in this directory and then with this file and then some uh, colon application, which is not really necessary because uh, it is already in the file there, but well, um, we put it here anyway. And then config, uh, again, the configuration file of gunicorn that we made. User is going to be user pet. Auto start is true, auto restart is true, which means that if something goes wrong, then it will auto restart. This is all for gunicorn. And we are going to create a similar file for nginx. Call it nginxpet.conf. Again, I'm pasting in the contents, and uh, it's pretty straightforward here. nginx pet is the program. The command is the location of the nginx command here. And then there is this parameter daemon of, uh, you can look that up in the nginx documentation as well. This needs to be set because daemon of means that it is run in the foreground. Normally nginx is running in the background, as I already showed you, but now we want to run nginx in the foreground because that's the way that supervisor works. It needs to run all the programs in the foreground so that it can manage them. Um, and then the parameters auto start, auto restart again, and we repeat the log files. We don't have a user because we have root user here because nginx was installed by root user. So that's why we need that. And therefore, we also repeat the log files so that we sh are sure that these are going to end up in the location that we want them to. So let's save this. And that completes the setup of supervisor. So let's first make sure that supervisor understands that we have new configuration. And we do that by the reread command. Let me show that to you. Here is supervisor, and then if you run it, then there is the supervisor control client here, running supervisor control, which is the client of supervisor. And it has a number of commands. They're all listed here. Update is a command which reloads the configuration. But first, we have to read the configuration, which is here. Reload it, uh, the configuration files, and then after that, we will do update, and then we can restart, start, stop, anything that we would like to do. Status here, stop the name of the process. So rereading is the first thing to do. And it tells us that both, are, both the processes are available. So now we will use supervisor control update. They are added to the configuration file, and now we can we should be able to start both nginx and unicorn with this command. Let's see if this worked. sudo supervisor control status. Whoa, that was a typing mistake. Sorry about that. sudo supervisor control status status. And we see that both of them are running, but this is strange because Nginx doesn't seem to be running OK. Let's have a look again. Now you see it's not starting. So there's something wrong here. Um, it might have to do, this sometimes happens, that the port is occupied. And the way to solve this is killing the process at the port. Let's do that with a fuser command. And then it will be at port 80, because that's the port that the internet uses. TCP, kill the process. Now let's see how supervisor is doing at the moment. Now it seems to go a bit better, because we're already 9 seconds there. Let's try it again. 16 seconds. Now it seems to be running OK. So then, exciting moment. Let's go to our site and see if everything is working. Seems to be OK. Let's go to themes, custom user model. Yeah, that seems to be running OK. The only thing is that here you can see, and also here at the bottom, um, some of the static settings are not uh, taken over. And that's because we need to collect them. 
add static and add media and we can do that by going back to the uh, virtual environment let's start that up into our project and then running python manage.py collect static and this actually copied 631 static files to the static directory now let's reload this and now you can see that it is picked up and also we have a nice footer so that is um, working so our site is up and running and uh, that's it for now well next time we'll do some more things like for example adding ssh uh, https and uh, some more interesting things see you next time